Unfortunately, it's all too easy to chalk Uber's success up to their aggressive pursuit of growth, but it's really their relentless focus on improving the customer experience that is the core driver of their success. That's what keeps customers coming back over and over, even in spite of the many mistakes that Uber has made as a business. Hey, it's Rick Kettner here. Let's talk about Uber and their incredible success. They took on the very well-entrenched taxi cab industry. And while much of the narrative today focuses on their aggressive tactics and their reckless culture and their pursuit of growth at all costs, these things alone don't explain their incredible success. So in this episode, we're gonna focus on how they were able to create so much value, how they were able to attract so many customers, and the practical business lessons and insights that we can take away by studying their success. We're gonna focus on three key insights. These are simple things that by the end of this episode, you'll have some new tools that you can put in your business strategy toolbox. So with that in mind, let's start with insight Number one, Uber focused on reducing customer friction. In business, when it comes to attracting customers to a product or service, there are generally two different things that you wanna focus on. On the one hand, you wanna increase promoting pressures, and on the other hand, you wanna reduce inhibiting pressures. So promoting pressures include things like running marketing campaigns, adding incentives, offering discounts, finding ways to make your product or your service more attractive to customers or simply making them more aware that it even exists. And when it comes to reducing inhibiting pressures, this generally involves eliminating steps, increasing convenience, removing uncertainty, finding ways to make it easier for customers to engage with your products or services. So those are the two different approaches that you generally wanna focus on. And when it comes to most businesses out there, when they're launching a new product or service, or when they're trying to increase engagement, they tend to focus on the first when it comes to promoting pressures. That's where most people focus their time and energy. They'll increase their marketing spend, they come up with interesting campaigns, offer incentives, these kinds of things. And while there's certainly nothing wrong with this approach at all, this tends to be the dominant approach, and as a result, it's more competitive. There's more noise out in the marketplace, there are more businesses trying to advertise what they're doing, more incentives, more discounts, all of this kind of thing, so it becomes highly competitive, even with products and services that might not be your direct competition because there's simply that much more noise out in the marketplace that might prevent your potential customer from really hearing your particular message. Now, again, nothing wrong with that approach, but what Uber primarily focused on for their success was reducing inhibiting pressures. So before Uber came along, the taxi industry had all kinds of friction involved in the process. And when I say friction, I'm using that largely interchangeably with this idea of removing inhibiting pressures, or at least inhibiting pressures in general. You wanna reduce friction, you wanna reduce these inhibiting pressures. And so in the case of the taxi industry, if you wanted to get a cab before Uber that involved typically calling for a cab, waiting it, for it to arrive, this involved all kinds of uncertainty because it, let's say you were at a restaurant or you're at a bar and a cab pulls up, do you know if it's your cab? Might it be somebody else's cab? Even once you determine that it's your cab, you gotta get in, you gotta explain where you're going, you gotta hope that you have the right payment method. Maybe they only take credit card, maybe they only take cash, maybe they normally only take credit card, but in this instance, the machine is down, so they only take cash. Just a ton of friction involved in the process. And the same is true on the other side of the table in terms of the driver. As a driver of a taxi cab, you gotta worry about things like lining up enough fares, you gotta wait in queues at hotels and at airports, you gotta manage the payment system, you gotta have cash on hand in case a customer doesn't have a credit card and you need to make change or something like this. So there's all kinds of friction. And worth noting, this kind of friction typically goes unnoticed until somebody like Uber comes along and demonstrates a far superior approach. So between customers and drivers, this kind of friction just gets put up with. People just assume this is what's involved in taking a cab, and either they don't really notice how much friction is involved, or they just simply accept that this is what entails when you go to actually take a cab. And so Uber comes along, they focus on these inhibiting pressures, the things that 
might annoy customers or make it less likely that they would turn to a solution like taking a cab. And they do things like allowing you to book via the app, set your destination, handle payment, track the arrival of your Uber, which is a huge thing because if you know how long it's gonna take for them to show up, now you can properly allocate for your time leading up to that point. So just a huge reduction in friction in general. And let me just say, in terms of reference for some of the things that I'm talking about, if you're interested in exploring more on this, two books that I recommend. Number one, Friction by Roger Dooley. Number two, Start at the End by Matt Wallert. Both of these books talk specifically about Uber as a primary example. The first book, Friction, focuses mostly on the idea of reducing inhibiting pressures, using the word friction to kind of explain that. And Start at the End by Matt Wallert focuses more on both sides of the equation. So just in general, how to change user behavior using both promoting pressures and inhibiting pressures. So both really, really good resources if you want to dive into more of what we're talking about here. But the really great thing about reducing friction is that it's highly scalable. So unlike promoting pressures, where if you really want to scale up your efforts, you need to scale up your budget along with it. When you reduce inhibiting pressures. When you remove friction, this naturally scales to all future customers. And in some cases, with a business like Uber, or even let's say a SaaS product, like let's say Google Docs or something like that, when you improve the user experience, when you make it easier for people to use the product, it also affects all existing customers. So it's incredibly scalable when you make this kind of a change and it affects all of your customers. Now, it doesn't just help with attracting and converting customers. Another really key idea here is that it also increases overall usage. And that takes us to insight number two. When something is easy, people do more of it. People don't just replace their regular taxi usage with Uber. When they switch to something like Uber, their usage actually increases. So they find new ways or new opportunities to use something like Uber because it's so much more convenient. And I'm not just talking about additional services, something like Uber Eats or other potential use cases for Uber. I just mean in general, when somebody's thinking about whether or not to use a cab or whether or not to even go somewhere, when something is easier, the customer is more likely to not only turn to something like Uber, but to use it more often than they would have the previous solution. So a perfect quote to kind of sum this idea up from Jeff Bezos of Amazon. He says, when you reduce friction, make something easy, people do more of it. Amazon is a perfect example of this. When it comes to shopping, they do all kinds of things to reduce friction. So for example, they offer free and fast delivery, they offer one-click checkout, ordering by voice with Alexa, and they also offer the opportunity for you to sign up for subscriptions. So for example, if you need recurring products like baby diapers or shampoo, you don't even have to go through the friction of placing an additional order. You can just simply set up a subscription and you will continue to be delivered the product on a regular scheduled interval. And all of this means not only, again, will you turn to Amazon instead of another provider, but you'll actually use Amazon even more. You'll find additional use cases because it's so convenient. The same is true with Google, with search. They've built their empire based on making it easier and easier for people to find information. They have a very simple interface. You got quick access in all the major web browsers. They have things like auto completion. So as you enter your search, query, it automatically begins to show you potential queries that you might be interested in, so you can just immediately finish your query. And in many cases, depending on what it is that you're searching for, if it's a simple question, you might get an answer right at the top of the results page. So you don't even have to go through the minor, minor friction of clicking a result and browsing a third-party website. You get the result directly on Google's page. One last example of this would be McDonald's with fast food. They reduce all kinds of friction from the very classic idea of the drive-through, just making it that much easier where you don't even have to get out of your car or go into the restaurant. You can simply pull up. Before you even make the decision, you can see how many cars there are in line and decide whether or not you wanna go to the restaurant. They offer things today like self-serve kiosks. There might be friction in the form of just simply having a conversation with another human for some people. And so that's gone. They offer the option to order with the app. And so 
Again, the core idea here is not just making it more attractive to customers or bringing in customers from another restaurant, but they actually make it more likely that people will use McDonald's more often than they would another restaurant. So that's the key takeaway here. When you make something easy, not only does it help attract or convert customers, it increases usage. Now, in addition to this, Whenever you really go out of your way to make customers happy, an interesting byproduct is typically this unlocks entirely new opportunities to pursue value and growth for your business. And this takes us to insight number three. Happy users unlock opportunities for growth. It's tempting to look at companies like Uber and just assume they had a master plan right from the start. That right from its inception, the founders realized this incredible opportunity to take over the taxi industry. And maybe even you could go a step further. I certainly fall into this trap from time to time where I assume maybe they even anticipated that autonomous vehicles would eventually become a thing and that Uber as a company recognize this opportunity that if they were to take over the taxi cab industry, they could eventually build the largest autonomous ride sharing network. And as with so many other companies that are highly successful, the fact is Uber did not have this incredible foresight. If you read up on this, a great book on the subject actually, Super Pumped by Mike Isaac, their initial ambition was much smaller. They simply set out to create a premium black car service in San Francisco. And even though you could probably argue that in the back of their minds, they might have thought there was an opportunity to expand to other markets and take this in different directions, right from the beginning, the idea of taking on the taxi industry was not a part of their core plan. And further to that, the idea of eventually getting into autonomous vehicles was almost certainly at best kind of a distant ambition where maybe they thought that might one day be a possibility, but it wasn't really on the horizon. And this is really important because the message I wanna kind of convey here is that if you simply set out to create value for customers, if you find some way to improve their lives, some way to reduce friction, some way to create new value for them, all kinds of opportunities naturally become unlocked over time. And the fact is today, Uber is in a position where if autonomous vehicles continue to develop over the next five to 10 years, let's say, there's a very real chance that between things like Uber Eats and delivering products and of course, transporting pe people from point A to point B, there's a very incredible opportunity for them to transform their business and take it to the next level. But the point here is that all of that is secondary to starting with simply creating incredible value for customers. This is played out in all kinds of businesses from Netflix and their humble beginnings when it comes to mailing out DVDs to take on Blockbuster and to add convenience for customers and to eventually pivot to streaming television. Companies like Facebook, companies like Google, a lot of these businesses had very, very humble beginnings. And as they created value for customers, they simply unlocked new and interesting opportunities and then they took advantage of them. They built on their momentum and they took advantage of them. So the core lesson here, the last insight here for this episode is that when you create value for customers, when you go out of your way to simplify things, to add value, and to ultimately create happy customers, opportunities will come along. And so you don't need to have a perfect plan right from the start. You don't need to know exactly how you're gonna take your business to the next level and the level after that and the level after that. You just simply have to have a clear vision today of how you can make the lives of customers better. And if you focus on that, opportunities will present themselves and you will have new and interesting ways to grow your business. So with all of this in mind, how should we think about Uber's impressive growth? Unfortunately, it's all too easy to chalk Uber's success up to their aggressive pursuit of growth, but it's really their relentless focus on improving the customer experience that is the core driver of their success. That's what keeps customers coming back over and over, even in spite of the many mistakes that Uber has made as a business. Now, there is a case to be made that their aggressive strategy and their willingness to skirt some government regulations might have been necessary when it comes to taking on a highly entrenched industry, one that almost certainly had some backroom deals and possible government corruption involved in maintaining the status quo. But 
that's all speculation. What we can take away with much more certainty is the fact that none of that would even matter if Uber didn't dramatically improve the customer experience. They wouldn't be able to take on the industry, no matter what their strategies or tactics were, if they didn't create a better experience for customers. So for the average business out there, for entrepreneurs out there that are studying Uber's success, what we should take away is not their aggressive strategy or their crazy and toxic corporate culture. What we should take away and possibly admire from a company like Uber is their relentless focus on improving the customer experience. That's it for this episode. If you have any comments or questions about anything that we covered here, let me know down in the comment section below. If you're listening to the audio edition, I'll include a link in the show notes that will take you to the video edition so you can participate in the comment section there as well. If you're interested in more content like this in the future, I recommend that you subscribe or follow my updates on social media so you don't miss out on future episodes. Thank you for tuning in. I look forward to connecting with you again in a future episode.